and give it a name and a password. Here I can select uh, whether I want this machine to be high availability enabled or not. Uh, I can add my virtual network interfaces. And after I click Next, I should be able to confirm and create it. I will not create it because it will further slow down my already slow uh, Windows machine. So I just showed you how to very easily within by using a few clicks create a guest VM with an Oracle VM manager. Now after your virtual guest VM or DOM U is created, it should show you the status of powered off. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. And as you can see, the status is initializing. This will change to running uh, in a little while. This guest VM is para-virtualized. It's not hardware virtualized, um, such as when an operating system family such as Windows needs to be hardware virtualized within Oracle VM uh, with para-virtualized drivers on top, uh, because this is a Linux based guest VM, so it's para-virtualized, so meaning it's sort of like piggybacking off the hypervisor. So as we can see, it's running. Let's go ahead and console link to it. Let me shift the screen focus to the console. Okay, it appears, um, okay, it just came back, great. I was hung for a little while, so I kind of got worried. Okay, it's asking me for my console password. This is something you specify as part of your guest VM. So as you can see, we have a guest VM within a guest VM on top of the hypervisor, which is something really amazing and unheard of. Uh, it's not a supported configuration. It's not something recommended, but it allows you to practice, install, learn, configure the whole nine yards without the need for physical bare metal hardware. And all the steps, like I mentioned, will be available in the form of detailed comprehensive guides on brainsurface.com that you can use to do all of this at home. So our Enterprise Linux 5 64-bit kernel has just booted, and I am logging in. And voila, uh, we have liftoff. So we have a guest VM within Oracle VM up and running right now. The next step that we're going to perform is what's called as live migration. Because this is a high availability enabled server pool or Oracle VM cluster as I call it, uh, we can basically migrate live all our guest VMs that sit in an HA enabled server pool uh, without any loss of service. And that's really awesome. Um, so let's go about doing that. Okay. Let me So here I am using PuTTY to remote into that guest VM that we just started up with an Oracle VM. Um, let me specify the password here. Again, this is 
So this machine is up and running. We will demonstrate how to live migrate from one VM server to another without a loss of service. So let's go back to our Oracle VM Management Console. And we have our guest VM up and running, as you can see. The status is running. And we will demonstrate how to live migrate from one server. The server that it currently exists, the actual VM server that exists is HAOVS02. And we will migrate it to HAOVS01. So I'm here on the next screen. I'm selecting the second server. As you can see, this is the only choice that we have because we only have two servers. And we click on Confirm. And that's it. So all we have to do to migrate, to live migrate our guest VMs from one server to another. As you can see, the status is migrating. Uh, this will take a little while, depending on your resources, as well as the size of your guest VM. Now let's go back to our guest VM and see if we still have So as you can see, I can still use it. Uh, we will briefly, for just a few seconds, lose connectivity to the guest VM. Uh, but it should be up and running pretty much the whole time. So let's go back to our management console. And while it's doing its thing, um, let me go back to the diagram that shows you what we're doing here. OK. So on the top, you can see your Oracle VM Manager Management Machine, which is responsible for managing all your Oracle VM architecture or, or infrastructure uh, and uses what's called as Oracle VM agent daemons on, that sit on all your Oracle VM servers or hypervisors. On the left side over here, you will see your shared storage that we implemented by using Oracle VM Worship Box shared VDI feature. And you have your different Oracle VM servers or hypervisors, one of which is acting as your server pool master, as well as utility server. In our case, we only have two VMs, uh, Oracle VM servers. So this diagram basically gives you a graphical depiction of what we are doing right now. So in the case that one Oracle VM server fails, the other Oracle v one of the other Oracle VM servers can automatically assume or automatically migrate your guest VMs and get them up and running uh, with a minimal downtime. Or you can live migrate them in real time if you have a planned downtime for patches, upgrades, and so on and so forth. So let's go back and see if the live migration is done. Okay, it is still in the process of migration. So we're going to give it a little while here. So we're coming pretty much to the end of our session. Uh, I appreciate all of you joining us. And hopefully, you're going, you've learned something valuable today. If you have any questions, you can type in them in the question box. and. I'll be happy and glad to answer your questions. OK, we have a question here that 
are we going to have any more of these sessions? Uh, the answer is we already have, we had three sessions that covered in quite a bit of detail the entire Oracle VM architecture, the different components, the paradigms, the technologies, and we demonstrated uh, setting up of the various components through exercises. Um, all of this material, the multimedia content, the audio, the video, uh, as well as elaborate and comprehensive guides that are available at brainsurface.com that you can use to practice everything uh, that I showed you within the last three sessions. So this is the final answer to your question is this is the final session and I believe we've covered everything that we needed to cover. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always go to brainsurface.com and post a question uh, in any of the discussion forums and I'll be happy amongst others to answer that for you. Excellent. So as we can see, the status just changed to running. The live migration is now complete. And let's switch the screen focus back to our SSH session. And see if our guest VM is still up and running. And voila, it is. So I just uh, quickly showed you how easy it was to live migrate within an HA enabled Oracle VM server pool or Oracle VM cluster as I call it. without any loss of service. So it's the same Oracle VM guest machine. And the amazing thing about today's session was that we were able to practice and learn everything without the need for physical bare metal hardware. And that is something really unheard of. Um, and like I said, all of this will be available in the form of guides that you can use to practice at home. Uh, and I believe that's all that we have time for today. I appreciate you joining us, and have a great day.